Truman has dominated Trans Am all season. He's won every race so far, but one. But Lime Rock winner Paul Vix has stayed at Amy's rear view all season long, and as the second half begins, he could be ready to pounce. Today, they'll do battle with two former champs, including an old nemesis who's straight out of Hollywood. Trans Am is next on CBS Sports Network. Welcome to Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. We're in Lexington, Ohio, for coverage of Trans Am, America's Road Racing Series. Today, it's the Next Dimension 100, presented by First Energy. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. NASCAR star Michael McDowell joins me for the call in a few moments. Shay Adam has our coverage today on Pit Road. A huge weekend for the Trans Am Championship here at the end of the summer. 75 plus entries across the three categories. Two separate events this weekend. TA2 getting its own separate race. Today, though, we focus on Trans Am and on TA3. In TA3, it ought to be a great battle. The defending champ, Ernie Francis Jr., and Todd Napierowski qualifying toward the front. They should stage a great battle. TA3 International, full of quality machines as well. In Trans Am, a somewhat different story. The series points leader, Amy Ruman, the dominator this year, at her home racetrack, qualifies only third. The front row occupied by a couple of drivers you don't normally see at the sharp end of the grid. The pole sitter is a driver who only runs occasionally now, but he is a former series champion, and he's standing by with Shea. Tommy Dreese is starting from the front row of today's race. Pole, as a matter of fact, and Tommy, you've won at Mid-Ohio before. You've won in Trans Am before. What's it going to take to do both of those today? Well, you know, we, we've had, this is the third year in a row we've had the pole here. I don't get to do this full time. But, uh, you know, I want to really convert this into a win this year. Um, last year, just some crazy stuff happened. Uh, so I think, you know, just getting out and going. And, you know, if the start's not there, pacing everybody. But, you know, for me, I'm just going to go. Uh, you know, I I'm not running for the championship. Obviously, I don't want to get involved in uh, their championship and mess up their thing. But if they don't respect me, and you know this is trans am this is the nascar this is the this is trans am has always been like the nascar of road racing you know and you know it, you know if you do me wrong you better do it right because i'll come back interview earlier shay adam talking to our pole sitter tommy dreesey michael mcdowell those could be construed as fighting words a very intense interview tommy dreesey sitting on the pole he wants to win the race not running for a championship that can be good and that can be bad all at the same time there is dreesey he will start first today in the straight out of compton 71 that's a corvette from the tony ave motorsports stables cliff ebbett in the 36 will be back there there's amy ruman and the mcnichols chevrolet one year ago dreesey and ruman had their problems on one of the last turns here at Mid-Ohio. It gets very tight here at Mid-Ohio. Not a room to run too wide coming on in the front stretch there. Amy got the short end of the stick there in the gravel trap, lost a lot of position, and uh, obviously she's unhappy what happened last year. That may have cost Amy a good shot at last year's Trans Am Championship. She'd like nothing better than to salt this one away today and take another step towards her first title in America's Road Racing Series. Part of the NASCAR weekend here at Mid-Ohio. Huge crowd funneling in to see Trans Am action. Today, Trans Am and Trans Am 3 will run as we chase the Trigon trophies. Trans Am points, Amy Ruman with nearly a 40-point advantage over Lime Rock winner Paul Fix. He had problems last time out at Brainerd. Peterson, Eben, Bauckham, and David Pintarek all in the hunt. But Doug Peterson, the two-time defending series champion, bringing out a brand new Tony Ave build. Yes, that is a Cadillac coupe. He'll start seventh in that car. Shea Adam with more. Trans Am fans will be used to seeing the bright yellow three-dimensional dot-com number 87 car of Doug Peterson. But this weekend, a bit of a new look for a bit of a new car. And Doug, you made the switch to this Cadillac. Uh, what's it like to drive the Cadillac around Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course? You know, it's pretty good. Um, this car is definitely different than the Corvette. Uh, we've had some great success with the Corvette. Now we're going to try to get that same success with the Cadillac. A two-time champion and winner of this race here last year. You don't have a win yet this year. Do you think you can do it today? You know, I'm starting seventh, and it's, it's not an easy track to, to pass, and, and the track's been quite slippery this weekend. Um, you know, I, I've been saying no more Mr. Nice Guy. If I have to move somebody a little bit out of the way, I think today I will. 
So Doug Peterson will start inside row number four in that Cadillac to try and get his first win of the season. Dreesey and Cliff Evan on row one. There's Amy Ruman, the points leader, and Paul Fix, who had a tough day at Brainerd. Yeah, this is a great field. We see a lot of big names in here. Greg Piggott, Tommy Dreesey's back, starting on the pole. This is going to be a great race in mid-Ohio. Pick it back in the sixth row. That is the Jaguar in which he won back in 2009. His last Trans Am victory coming then. Greg trying to win a race in five different decades of competition. 13 Chevys, a couple of Mustangs, the Cadillac, and a Jaguar. 17 Trans Am machines here at mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Now, the other half of the doubleheader is we watch Pickett in that duly re-energized 68 car, TA3, American Muscle, TA3 International. We've got 12 cars in American Muscle, including a Dodge Challenger, Michael McDowell. This is the first time we've seen the Challenger in the TA3 category. Now, we've seen the Viper in the TA3 International. we got two Chevys, three Porsches, four BMWs, a lot of manufacturer, great racing throughout the field. It ought to be a great show in TA3 American Muscle and International. And here's your lineup. Bernie Francis Jr., the championship leader in his Camaro. Todd Napierowski, boy, those two have been at the head of the class just about all year. I've been so impressed with Ernie Francis Jr., young man, very composed, does a very good job managing his races and gets the victory lane. Mel Shaw in the fifth row with Spencer Caudle. We take a look at the TA3 International starting lineup. Michael Camus in the BMW takes over on the pole in the 08. Lee Saunders in the Viper outside. Yeah, it's great to see that Viper back up front. Mid-Ohio, there's not a lot of big straightaways to stretch it out, but I think he's going to be a challenge today. Milton Grant, Randy Mueller in row number five in that category. Getting set to start here at Mid-Ohio. That's Dreesey in the white 71 on the inside of row one. Cliff Evan alongside the points leader, Amy Ruman, on the inside of row number two. And the green flag is in the air. We're racing at Mid-Ohio, and Dreesey bolts to the early lead. And we're three wide for second place. Amy Ruman got a great start, did exactly what she needed to do. Ball picks alongside Ruman for second spot Evan in fourth great battle for fifth you've got TA2 graduate Adam Andretti in the yellow 47 moving by Simon Gregg as they come down the hill a good clean start no contact very hard to do at mid-Ohio meantime TA3A and TA3I getting going and Ernie Francis Jr. loses the lead that's the 39 of Todd Dave Borowski jumping to the point as they hit the S. Lee Saunders moving into third position behind Francis Jr. and then you've got a good two-car battle there for fifth Meantime, it's Dreesey up in front. Ruman is second. Fix is third. Evans settling into fourth. On board with Paul Fix. Our replay XD on board views here at Mid-Ohio. Yeah, Paul Fix did an amazing job. Lime Rock Park got his first victory of the year. He's been fast all weekend at Mid-Ohio. He does a great job of managing his races, and he's got a great view out the front of Amy Ruman and Tommy Dreesey. In the stop flex machine, the four car, that's one of the Tony Ave Motorsports entries as well. Right now, though, everybody behind Tommy Dreesey. It's hard to drive these cars anyway, Michael McDowell, but when you only run one or two races a year, which is what Dreesey does these days, it's got to be really tough. Well, absolutely. It's, it's very difficult to be out of a car for that long and jump back in. But Tommy Dreesey's a veteran driver in a great Tony Ave prepared race car, so he has all the key tools that he'll need to get the victory lane. There's Doug Peterson in the three-dimensional.com 87, and that is a Cadillac bodied entry. Brand new race car as he turns to the inside of Greg to pick up a spot. Oh, trouble. The 99 car in TA3. That's a TA3 American entry. Looks like he's lost the motor in that Chevrolet Camaro. A lot of smoke, and I would imagine that he's putting fluids down. A uh, very fast part of the racetrack. We might see a caution. Rich Rigdon out of Michigan at the Duperon.com Chevrolet. The 99 car. First time we've seen him this season. Unfortunately, his day is a brief one. Still, it's Dreesey out in front in the early laps here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Fix. Evan, Adam Andretti rounding out the top five as Amy Ruman tries to chase down the leader. Heading into the final corner here. Looks like trouble as well for another one of our Trans Am entries. On board with David Pinterek in the 57, the Crider Racing entry. He's from Canfield, Ohio. Caution is out. Pinterek's car seems to have some serious problems. Here's Shea. David Pinterek's not getting off to a great start today. On the pace lap, he was down on power, and the crew is now reporting they think his engine is blowing up. He's laying oil all over the track as it is right now. David, coming off of his best series finish of fourth at Brainerd, he's not going to get up that high today. Crew doesn't look as though they're pleased with what they're seeing out of the 57. Meantime, Rich Rigdon in the 99 still laying down a lot of smoke and probably a lot of fluid. And that is apparently the reason for our full course caution as Rigda drives that car back toward pit road, still under power. Yeah, and hopefully, like you said, that's not all oil coming out of that race car. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of speedy dry on the racetrack. 
right on the driving line, which can be very tricky. Ted Napierowski in the 39, the Tremec Chevrolet. Off to a great start here today, jumping to the lead early at TA3. A very nice job. He's all season long been chasing Ernie Francis Jr., the defending champion in TA3 American Muscle. Before the start, Shane talked to Napierowski about his championship hopes. Todd Napierowski, this is a big moment for you this weekend. Halfway through the season, you're second in points. Can you catch Ernie Francis Jr.? That's the goal. We're working awful hard on it. We, uh, we've got some uh, things, improvements on the car this weekend. We're a little bit closer to the pole or practice as well. So we're hoping we got the speed to uh, to race the front runner. And uh, we got, you know, five races to go. And, and uh, we're just going to do everything we can to get it done. So Todd Napierowski out of Michigan with a championship opportunity. Michael McDowell, 19 points behind Ernie Francis. Plenty of time to catch him. There's still a lot of time, a lot of racing to happen. It's all about being consistent. Getting those, you know, those top three finishes is what's going to win this championship. In TA3 International, Lee Saunders is the points leader by 30-some points. Not quite 30 over Russ Snow. Jerry Green in third ahead of Berkeley. Michael Camus and Steve Strymer, your top six. So Saunders in a good position if he can have a good run here today. New sponsor on Claudio Burton's Corvette. That's bullet liner on that beautiful seven car. It is very sharp looking Corvette. New bodywork is awesome. No question about it. Under caution in the next Dimension 100 presented by First Energy. We'll be back. Trans Am Racing on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype, production, proven. By First Energy, bringing good energy to the community and by bullet spray on truck bed liners. High caliber protection. Back at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, Trans Am on the CBS Sports Network. I'm Rick Benjamin, Michael McDowell alongside. Shay Adam with our coverage on Pit Road. David Pintarek's 57 car didn't make it all the way around to Pit Road with those engine woes. Absolutely. I think what David did is pulled off the racetrack, didn't want to dump too much oil on the racetrack, a veteran move, and hopefully we'll get back to racing green here soon. Safety team out to hook the 57 car back toward Pit Road. Lights are out, though, on the pace car here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Single file restart. Tommy Dreesey, Amy Ruman, and Paul Fix, your top three, and we are set to get back at it here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, the green flag is back in the air, and here comes Amy Rubin. Amy is putting the pressure on Tommy Dreesey right from the get-go. Out of turn number one, up toward the keyhole. Amy with running room on the outside. We'll see if she can get the job done here. Tries the outside in move and tries to go back to the high side. Looks like Dreesey is holding her up at the yeah, Dreesey running a very defensive line. You can see all Whoa. this. Oh, he turns down on Ruman. There's contact. And they lean on each other. Oh, they're not done yet. Tommy Dreesey is unhappy about that move with Amy Ruman. Ball fixed right there in third. Evan in fourth. Adam Andretti in fifth. Ruman leading a gaggle of five. And Doug Peterson back there in sixth. Evan on the outside, trying to take second away and hold it on fix. Fix slides into third. Dreesey gets kicked all the way back to fourth now. And we're seeing great racing on this restart. Now, a lot of that is caused by there was a tremendous amount of oil on the racetrack. And this is the first time these cars are going through it at speed. So people are making mistakes, slipping and sliding. Once all this settles down, we're going to see who has the quickest car. Adam Andretti in the ECC 47 car. He's run another race this season in that car. He's a TA2 regular. Meantime, trouble out on the S's. That's Randy Mueller in the BMW, the Zero. Some contact with Bill Baton in the Hendrickson Camaro, the 85. We got another look at it here, but Mueller's car sustaining heavy damage on the right-hand side to the rear end. Looks as though there may be some broken parts and pieces back there, Michael McDowell. Have another look at it here. Baden got set on a trip through the grass, and he clipped the zero. It's very hard to see what happened to Baden getting into that corner, but obviously Randy Mueller, innocent bystander, had no idea that Baden was going to be on the inside there. Mueller got sent to the rear from the start, a technical infraction after qualifying, even though he was the fast TA3 qualifier. Meantime, in Trans Am, down the back straightaway, Ruman is still the leader. Tommy Dreesey trying to make a move here on fix for third. And you see all that smoke coming off of Dreesey's car. That's still that speedy dry getting into turn four. Oh, oh. he tags fix there. Now drives to the inside and off the racetrack and turns Fix around. And Tracy able to keep going. I'm not sure what started that, but it looks like Paul Fix was observing that local yellow. Tommy Dreesey just got to the back of him, getting impatient, um, and obviously Paul Fix got the short end of the deal. Doug Peterson able to scoot by in the Cadillac. Here's another look as Ruman leads. There's the contact with Fix. Dreesey in the 71, wiggling Fix, and then 
getting up alongside him, going out to the grass to do it. And as you can see, Tommy Dreesy had no racetrack there to be inside of Paul Fix, was trying to make a hole forcefully. Um, and it's just real unfortunate for Paul Fix, having a great run. On board the stop flag Chevrolet, you'll see the contact. There it is. And then Fix getting turned around by Dreesy's machine. So the pole sitter Dreesy's been in a couple of jams already here in the early going. Stay green, meantime, at TA3 International and TA3 American Muscle. There's Todd Napierowski in the Tremec 39 in front of Michael Camus in the BMW. Ernie Francis next in line to the Breathless Performance Chevrolet, but all of these cars trail in the Viper of Lee Saunders. And what I love about this category, you have the International and the American, but they're still going head to head. Now, this is not a battle for position as we see throughout the entire race, but it's still battling throughout the racetrack. And what's hard here is Ernie Francis Jr. is just trying to make sure that he gets as many points as he can to hold on to that championship lead. Got a great fight at TA3 American Muscle right now, but a full course yellow for all the carnage down in the S's. Let's get an update. Here's Shea Adam. That mix up between Tommy Dreesy and Paul Fix has left at least Tommy reporting that his car is okay. He said to the crew, there's no handling issues, it's okay. I just need to put my head down and get those spots back. The benefactor of that mix up, however, Adam Andretti. Adam now running in third. Behind the safety car here at Penn Ohio Sports Car Course, and here comes Dreesy flying up alongside the pace car and alongside the race leader, Amy Ruin. Now, why would Dreesy think he belongs up there? I don't know if uh, Tommy's trying to show a little bit of uh, displeasure with Amy, uh, maybe some racing in the, on that restart that we didn't see. I'm not really sure why Tommy Dreesy uh, went up there, but it uh, looks like he's falling back in line. And uh, when the green flag drops, maybe that'll all play out. Bill Bates, meantime, the 85, and Randy Mueller in the zero. They're out of those race cars. Everybody's okay. But two wreckers down at the S. There's a little conversation going on down there, uh, making sure that everybody's on the same page. That's Mueller in the Epic Motorsports uniform with the blue helmet talking to some of the safety workers there. Bill Baton over there as well. So Amy Rubin is the leader. Cliff Evan, Adam Andretti, Doug Peterson, and Dreesy, your top five. We'll be right back. Getting set for a restart at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The next Dimension 100 presented by First Energy. I'm Rick Benjamin, NASCAR star Michael McDowell alongside Shea Adam with our coverage on Pit Road. Single file restart, Amy Rubin, Cliff Evan, and Adam Andretti, your top three, and Doug Peterson in that brand new Cadillac right there in fourth. Yeah, Doug's doing a great job. You know, it's not just a brand new body, but a brand new race car. Doug's been in that Corvette a very long time, and I'm surprised to see the speed that they have out of the Cadillac already. Dimensional.com onboard looks here, courtesy of our friends at Replay XD. The look back at Dreesy coming into the keyhole corner here. Dreesy's taking a different line in that turn than just about everybody else. He's been about a car width up from the curb. Yeah, he's, he's kind of diamond in the corner, trying to get a straight drive up off, and that just sets up the long straightaway here um, to try to make a pass going into turn four. Here comes Adam Andretti trying to take a look at least at Cliff Evan for a second spot. Peterson just watching things from fourth. Amy Rubin's lead about a car length and a half now. Evan with one of his best runs of the year. Absolutely great battle. This is what we're used to seeing in the Trans Am Series. Amy Rubin out front, um, but it's not going to be easy. You can see right here Cliff Evan putting on the pressure, and Adam Andretti, someone we talked about all year in that TA category, might have a shot at a victory today. Rubin, Evan, and Adam Andretti, your top three. Then it's Peterson. And Tommy Dreesy, who's been a big story here so far today, after starting on the pole, he has slid back to fifth. Not happy about that in the early laps as we work lap number 13 here today. Getting back to the carousel corner. This is one of the toughest corners in road racing, Michael McCall. You've got that carousel right and then the quick turn back left onto the straight. Not to mention the surface here at Mid Ohio. Whoa! Oh, the 59 of Simon Gregg going around at that very point. Yeah, very tricky. Simon Gregg putting the power down, got a little bit loose. What I was talking about is there's some bumps as you come onto that front straightaway. And if you don't have the car just right, you get through those bumps. We're going to take a replay and see what happened. On board with Simon Gregg and Jim Durhawk's 59. Looked like he clipped the curb on the inside. It doesn't take much. Hard into the gas, got on the curb, back in, got light, and around it went. Simon, a former series champion, able to find low gear and get going once again, but he lost a lot of track position in that. Very lucky, very fortunate there that no other contact was made. Sitting in the middle of the racetrack to spin 360 and take back off. Uh, nice driving for sure. Ruben is still out in front, but Cliff Evans just a couple of car lengths behind. Third is Adam Andretti there in the yellow 47. 
Evan trying to move a little bit high and perhaps find a lane to get up alongside the 23 car. And Mid Ohio is a tight, twisty, technical racetrack. There's only a few places to pass here. So what you're trying to do is just make sure that you're in position when you come onto these long straightaways that have a shot to do it in the braking zone. Well, the liner running order, top of your screen, keeping you up to date on where your favorite driver is. Fourth belongs to Peterson in that zebra striped car, the 87, the brand new Cadillac. And at TA3, Lee Saunders of the Viper getting heat from Michael Camus. Yeah, it looks like the Viper's losing a little bit of speed here later in the race. We saw very early on Lee Saunders able to stretch a big lead, but now Camus has reeled him in, and it's going to be interesting to see if that BMW can get around that big Viper. Back to Trans Am, meantime, on the back side of the racetrack, Tommy Dreesey and Paul Fix, who got into that tangle a few moments ago. Greasy moving to the inside, Fix going by. SCCA Pro Racing officials taking a look at Greasy's actions. There could be a penalty coming up. Contact in TA3. We've got a couple of cars off at the exit of turn one. Rich Jones in that Mustang, the Joe Mack Truck Bodies and Cranes 37 car. First time out for him with us. Bill Grant out of Tennessee and his Porsche, the 55. They got together, both went flying off at the exit of turn number one. Meantime, what about Todd Napierowski and his big to win today? He's stuck on pit road. Here's Shea Adam. Terrible day for Todd Napierowski as it looks like the championship deficit to Ernie Francis Jr. are going to get a little bit bigger. All three of his team cars have now hit issues so far in the race, two of them having to be retired. Looks like he might have a flat left rear. They're trying to change that as quickly as possible and get him back out because Todd needs every position he can get and every point he can muster as Tommy Dreesey comes down the pit lane to serve his penalty right behind. So a tough break for Napierowski here. Meantime, here's Dreesey coming to the penalty box. And Tommy Dreesey serving that stop and go penalty for avoidable contact earlier with Paul Fix. So that certainly puts a dent in Dreesey's plan to try to win here today at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in the Tony Ave Motorsports Chevrolet as he comes back up onto the racetrack. Action all over the place here. Up front, meantime, Cliff Evan doing a great job. He is right in the tire tracks of race leader Amy Ruman in the McNichol Chevrolet. In TA3, it's Camus, Saunders, and Russ Snow. We'll be right back. Trans Am Racing on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Racing Electronics, number one in race communications worldwide. And by Replay XD. The new Prime X is here. Record, replay. Back at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, big crowd on hand. It's always a great weekend here with the Next Dimension 100 presented by First Energy unfolds for the Trans Am Championship, America's Road Racing Series. I'm Rick Benjamin. Michael McDowell alongside Michael Caboos, meantime, taking that Epic Motorsports BMW to the lead. Trans Am machines in the lead group now having to navigate a lot of slower traffic. There's a lot of traffic, and in Mid Ohio, it's very tight and twisty very important that you pick your time when you're going to pass. Amy Room is being very aggressive getting through that traffic. Speaking of aggressive, here's Adam Andretti. We know he is always on the gas hard, but he goes around. He got to second spot and overdrove the corner. Heavy damage to the rear end of the 47 car, and he loses several spots. Oh, very unfortunate for Adam. Got into the corner too hot. A lot of traffic there. Trying to make a move on Amy for the race lead. Let's take a replay. And down into the corner, Adam on the outside. Might have had a little contact with the BMW there on the left side. And it's tricky to see there. Obviously got in a little bit deep, got loose. Um, you know, unfortunate for Adam, he had a good shot at the lead there. One more time. One of the TA3 International cars, the 94 car, one of the Porsches off into the gravel trap, able to stay on the gas and get to the grass. So he won't be beached over there. And that's fortunate for that driver. But a tough thing for Ed Meantime, here is Dreesey. Now way down in the running order after the stop and go penalty, Amy Ruman lets him go through as he tries to get a lap back. Amy comes back at him out of the corner. These two have some history together now. They do the crossover, Dreesey in front of the race leader. It's one thing to try to get a lap back, but I'm not so sure this is maybe not a little more to that as Doug Peterson joins the fight in second spot. Let's listen in on Amy Ruman's radio. Obviously very upset. Tommy Dreesey, very uncalled for, trying to mess with the race. He's multiple laps down. Uh, Amy Ruman needs to stay calm here, think about the championship. 
Meantime, the former runner-up Cliff Evan on good run with the problem. Here's Shea. Cliff Evan pulled into the pits with significant damage, but he is showing no signs of giving up. He's staying in the car, and the crew is putting lots and lots of tape. It looks as if the rear bumper has come completely detached from the rest of the car, and the crew is trying frantically to fix it. It'll take a lot of tape, though, guys, before Cliff can get back out on the circuit. Very unfortunate for Cliff Evan. It looks like it's just body damage. Hopefully, they'll get some bare bond on the car, and he'll get back out in the race. Meantime, Amy Ruman, the race leader, still trying to find a way by Tommy Dreesey. Now, Amy's been complaining on the radio that she's being blocked by Dreesey, who's a lap or more dead on. There's contact coming out of two. And this is uncalled oh, for. Oh, Peterson goes by and gets turned around. Amy Ruman gets ridden off the racetrack by Dreesey. Peterson got collected in it with that brand new Cadillac. This will bring out, I would suspect, the full course yellow on the backstretch here at Mid Ohio. And the race leader and the championship leader in severe trouble. Dreesey's car, fuel being dumped out of the headers, causing a little bit of a fuel fire there. He'll have to bail. And Peterson, that brand new, beautiful Cadillac body machine from Tony Abe's team, he's off the course with damage. Here it is again. Ruman with plenty of room to go by. Dreesey just turns down on her, it looks like. And I want all the, the viewers to understand what this is, is this is payback for something. We haven't seen all of it, but obviously Tommy Dreesey is very upset with Amy Ruman. We're not sure why, but here's what we do know. Amy's in the thick of this championship. Tommy Dreesey coming in for one race. SCCA just needs to park him. One more look here from Amy's on board. She's online here, and it looked like Dreesey just turned down. And Dreesey had been doing this for several laps, just trying to get in Amy's way really just trying to cause trouble. Doug Peterson, an innocent bystander. Yeah, Doug Peterson, that brand new Cadillac tore up. You know, this is so unfortunate for Trans Am. We have such a great championship going on here, and to have somebody come in and ruin it like that is unfortunate. And Doug Peterson, innocent bystander, just got collected up in their mess. And ends up in the inside wall, and Dreesey brings the straight out of Compton Chevrolet, the Tony Ave Motorsports car, to pit road. He's a teammate of Peterson, so that will not make people very happy in that pit area. Amy Ruman and her crew on the radio assessing the damage, able to drive that car, refire it, and drive it all the way around with that left front totally gone and a lot of bodywork damage. Yeah, a lot of bodywork damage. That left front tire obviously coming apart, tearing apart the bodywork. Hopefully, there's not suspension damage. Rip apart that bodywork, get a new left front tire on there, and hopefully, she can salvage at least some points. This is going to be a costly stop, though, Michael McDowell. They stay green on the racetrack. I'm surprised with all the carnage, but. Green flag still wet. Yeah, green flag still out. Obviously, everybody was able to drive away there. A lot of debris on the racetrack, but Trans Am stays green. Um, really unfortunate for Amy. She's losing valuable track position and points that go towards that championship. And a rough one so far for our championship leader. Behind her, you see Tracy's car stop. Cliff Evans still on pit road, so some of the contenders have fallen by the wayside. That puts John Bauckham in his Ford Mustang out of Charlotte, North Carolina. The RoadRaceSports.com board. He is your new race leader. And it's great for John Bauckham. He's always a top five guy. He's always in position. And that's what you got to do. When other people make mistakes and things happen on the racetrack, you've got to be able to capitalize. And John's doing that right now. Meantime, Paul Fix, who had his own moment with Dreesey earlier, he's got the bit in his teeth. He's in second spot again, trying to chase down the leader as Amy Ruman's team continues their work on the McNichols Chevrolet. We'll be right back with the next Dimension 100. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. It has been a wild one from start to this point in the race. Shay Adam ready to talk to Tommy Dreesey, who's out of the race car. Tommy, my friend, this is not the way we wanted your day to end, but what happened out there? You know, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I said at the earlier of the show, if somebody does me wrong, they're not going to finish the race. We were leading a nice restart. The 23 car, whatever their names are, hit me in the carousel in the back. They get a little time on me. I know how to correct. I would have gone around and then hits me twice off the track. You know, I got black flagged for something stupid. I, I broke a rule. I passed under the yellow. And then, you know, I just wanted to make her life a little bit easier, the 23 car, whatever the hell their names are. And uh, she hit me again. She just hit me out of the carousel. She could have had her own race. I was not gonna, you know, I'll retaliate in a different way. 
But she hit me again. She was frustrated. So, you know, I, if I did anything wrong, I apologize for it. But I held the lead. I was much quicker than everybody when we started the race. I come out on the restart, fair restart. The 23 car lagged back. I'm not supposed to do that. Still beat her to the keyhole and uh, hit me twice and then runs me off the road. Well, what am I supposed to do, you know? Thanks, Tommy. I'm not sure I know what race Tommy Dreesey was talking about there, Michael McDowell. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, unfortunate for Amy that uh, she had to deal with all this today. It's, um, you know, going to hurt her championship, but that's not over. We still got a lot of racing left. Um, she is doing a great job this season. One race isn't going to find the championship, but it's definitely a setback. Most of the front body were gone off the 23. New left front bolted on. Amy back on pace, but show 13th. Meantime, the battle for the lead. Ball fix the Live Rock winner, trying to track down John Baucom out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Hasn't won one of these in quite some time. Would love nothing better than to get to victory late today. Fix those to last championship hopes this year. Absolutely. And Paul Fix early in the race had that spin with Tommy Dreesey. Now he's running down John Baucom, going to challenge for the lead. Who would have thought this in just a short period of time he had gone from a spin to a possible win? And a shout out to Jim McAleese in the 03, running in third position, a driver who is traditionally in the top 10. How about the 47 of Adam Andretti was in some contact earlier. You see the left rear damage to that car. That was sustained in the S's earlier. The ECC Chevrolet, Adam up into fourth position there. So Adam Andretti getting back on the button here, driving nice and smoothly at the moment. Let's get a pit road update. Back downstairs to Shea Adam. Paul Fix may be second in the championship right now, but he is looking to improve on that in the form of new people he's brought onto his team. Mark Scott is the latest addition to the number four team, and that is Mark Scott of Riley and Scott. Very deep raging racing history. Good news for the team and hopefully good news for Paul. So Paul Fix saying, hey, whatever it takes, we're going to make a serious run at this championship. Amy Ruman does not have this thing locked up by any stretch of the imagination. Her problems here today could certainly prove very profitable for Paul Fix. What about Greg Pickett? Great former champion of the series, running fifth right now, trying to win a Trans Am race in five consecutive decades. Hasn't run one of these in several years. He talked to Shea earlier. You know, listen, I've had a wonderful, wonderful career. Uh, coming back here and meeting some dear, dear old friends from years ago, uh, uh, working on all these cars. And I must tell you, the competition has really, I, I'm really delighted to be here. Competition is really tough. These people, while I've been gone, have continued to rub on these cars and make them better, make them faster. Uh, Amy, the one gal, and it really, really a talented young lady. I'm delighted. I used to race her dad. I can say that about almost everybody in this field. Oh, I remember you. I used to race her, and of course, make sure and say hello to your dad for me, uh, Mr. Adams, who was a dear, dear friend of mine from years ago. I, I just couldn't be happier. It's beautiful out here today. The fans have been delightful. I'm lovely that I had a, uh, any part that I played in the early uh, aspects, or I would say the middle of the Trans Am uh, legacy. It was certainly a pleasure of mine, and it's just a gift and a blessing that I'm able that my wife and family allow me to come and spend a little time doing this, because I'm just having a great time. Greg Pickett, a true gentleman, uh, a big part of the Trans Am history, being a champion, and uh, as you can see, just a great guy, excited to be back in the Trans Am series, and we're thankful to have him. Absolutely. Talked to Greg before the start today. A treat to have Ian Penny back in the paddock. Meantime, the 86 of Bauckham still out in front. Greg's car developing a problem while we were listening to that interview pre-race. Looked like he fell off the pace. He was running fifth, but he slowed dramatically. Kerry hit going by there, and Greg headed to pit road in the 68 car. How about up front, Michael Caboos in the 08, the BMW. He is continuing to add to his lead in TA3 International. Absolutely. We saw the battle between he and Lee Saunders early in the field, but that BMW manages the tires well and is really good around this mid-Ohio sports cars cross. Randy Mueller qualified well, had trouble early, got involved in a skirmish in the zero car. Mueller the winner at Lime Rock earlier in the season. Here comes Saunders. He's not giving up here in that Viper. Absolutely not. We still got a lot of racing left here. But like I said, the BMW, this is that kind of track. BMW is like the tight, technical, twisty elevations. That Viper wants a long straightaway. Greg Pickett's crew with the hood off on that Jaguar, taking a look at things, seeing if they can get this former series champion back on the racetrack. Sports Car Course, the next dimension 100 presented by First Energy alongside Michael McDowell. I'm Rick Benjamin, Shea Adam on Pit Road, and John Walker lapping by that Dodge Challenger we talked about earlier. First time, oh, in trouble for Claudio Burton. 
in the bullet liner Chevrolet the seven car Claudio was making some progress up through the field but he spins in the S's trying to get pointed in the right direction get back out on the racetrack here we saw that challenger at TA3 American for the first time let's get an update on Greg Pickett's situation back over to Shea a very taxing return to the Trans Am Series for Greg Pickett as he has had a power steering failure. He's been driving the last few laps just by his own strength. Brought the car into the pits and the guys are trying to put some more fluid in. But with so little time remaining in this race, it looks like Mr. Pickett's day is done. Not the return he was hoping for, but the good news, he'll get to try again in a few weeks' time at Road America. Glad to hear that Greg Pickett will be back. Not the day he wanted, but glad to see him back in the series. Absolutely. Pleasure to speak to Greg this weekend, and great to have him back in competition in Trans Am. Meantime, race leader with his hands full here, Paul Fix has tracked down Bauckham as they come onto the front straightaway. And Fix about to make a move for the lead down into one. Oh, a little smoke there. Paul Fix looked like he was able to drive by John Bauckham fairly easy there. I'm not sure if John's having some issues. We see smoke coming out of the exhaust as he shifts there, so it might be down on power at this point. Michael, you've noticed some debris on the grill of the Ford Mustang, the 86, now running in second spot, so overheating possibility certainly there as Fix blows by. Paul Fix gunning for his second Trans Am win of the season, and in third spot, there's Jim McAleese in the 03 car. Adam Andretti, meantime, running in fourth with heavy body damage on the 47 car. Good run for McAleese today. If he gets on the podium, what a good accomplishment for a guy who hasn't been doing this very long. Absolutely. We've seen the running order get very mixed up here with the, the contact and damage with Amy and Tommy Dreesey. Um, you know, but what's really cool here, Paul Fix was... Oh, carry hit of the 19, spins up in the keyhole. Able to get it pointed in the right direction. Looked like he did a 360 back on the gas. It didn't look like it cost him too much time back on the racetrack. It's still running strong. Carry hit shown in sixth position now with a couple of laps to go. Working lap number 40. TA3 standings, top of your screen, presented by Three Dimensional Services Group. As hit goes down into turn number four. Bauckham, meantime, in the 86, was the race leader. Everybody's slowing now because Amy Ruman is in the groove in the carousel, and she's way off the pace. Bauckham gets by her. Yeah, we're not sure what damage Amy has. We saw the body work, but she may have some other issues as well, just trying to make laps to get points. Bauckham in second in the Mustang. A little bit of white smoke puffing out of the headers there. Going to try to nurse that thing home and get a nice second spot today. Yeah, only a few laps left. Um, never good when you see smoke coming out of the exhaust. Possibly going to have an issue, engine issue, but hopefully, if he can just nurse it home, he'll get a good top five finish. And there's that piece of tape on the grill as he goes by the TA3 International leader, Caboose. Meantime, we've got a car off. Alan Lewis in the BC Race Cars 15. That's a good looking Chevrolet Corvette out of Canada. Lewis off to the side. There'll be no caution flag with just a couple of laps to go. Paul's wife, Lauren Fix, watching, hoping her husband can close the deal and pick up his second Trans Am victory here in 2015. Onto the front straightaway. White flag waving. A little odd here in mid Ohio. You start on the back stretch, but everything else is flagged here on the pit road straightaway. Yeah, different than you see at other racetracks, but a little bit of tradition here at Mid Ohio. You see a lot of stuff happening here on the last lap. Paul Fix has a big lead. All he has to do is keep that car on the racetrack, and he's going to see that checkered flag. Puts Mickey right another lap down in the six car out of the Jim Durhag stable. The stop flex Chevrolet for Fix. Now, this victory, if Fix could close the deal, is going to really help him in his championship battle against Amy Rubin being shown here at 12th after the wreck with Treacy earlier. The heavy body damage. Great job by the McNichols Chevrolet crew to fix that car and get her back out there, but she'll give up a lot of ground here. Absolutely. Not the day that Amy wanted to have, but this is exactly what Paul Fix needed to get back in the championship. We heard him earlier in the season say, we're gunning for this championship. We're still in it, fighting hard, and today he's going to be in victory lane. One of the Tony Abe Motorsports Chevrolets. Good day for Paul Fix. He's rebounded. From contact, remember, he was the first driver to really have trouble with Dreesey. Got punted off the racetrack, managed to collect the car, keep his wits about him, get back up on the racetrack, and take advantage as others have fallen by the wayside. Absolutely, these are long races, and that's why you got to fight hard till that checkered flag falls. Who would have thought that we just saw Paul Fix have a spin going into turn six and now be in the checkered flag? Well, there we go, boys. Ran our own race, didn't worry about anybody else. Paul Fix takes the checkered flag here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. You can hear the joy in his voice as he talked to his crew coming to the checkered flag. Michael Camus, meantime, is going to win TA3 International in the next Dimension 100. Good run for him. And Ernie Francis Jr. comes back 
after Ty Napierowski's problems, Ernie Francis picks up another victory at TA3 American Muscle. All right, when we continue in Mid Ohio, we'll talk to our winners. Tim Racing on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype, production, proven. By First Energy, bringing good energy to the community. And by Bullet Spray on Truck Bed Liners, high caliber protection. Plenty of storylines to talk about. Shay Adam now with Amy Ruman, who is very unhappy. Amy, you're all kinds of fired up. I can see that from your body language, but what happened out there from your perspective? My perspective is Tommy Dreesey is the most unprofessional, unsportsmanlike, unimaginable, worst driver in, a, in, a, in what he calls a professional sport. What he did was unacceptable today. He trashed my car. He blocked us. We were winning the championship. This is third year in the row. He's hit me. He has a vendetta against me. He's unprofessional. And, and I, it is unacceptable what happened here today. Amy Roman fired up. And she has a right to be. What happened today was unacceptable. So Amy and her team will prepare that car to go to Road America in a couple of weeks. Fix gets his second win of the season. Best career result for Jim McAleese and Adam Andretti gets on the podium. John Bauckham leading the race. Thought we had it. Had some engine trouble at the end. Ended up fourth. Tough break indeed. Tommy Dreesey shown 15th. That could change when the stewards get done taking a look at what happened here today. Paul Fix celebrating in victory lane, his second win of the year. Here's Shea. A very happy Paul Fix getting out of the winning car. Paul, we talked to you this morning. You said all you needed to do was to win and keep your head down. Well, you're doing that, and now you're back well in the championship chase. But what was it like to take that checkered flag? Well, as I said, we were going to run our own race, and we did. When Dreesey got into me under the yellow, I was really... Uh, upset but kept my head down i said we'll make this back the car will get better as we go on and boy it did and you know some luck with some attrition and uh i can't be happier tony ave put together a great car for me my crew mark came on board as our engineer and dave and greg did a great job as usual second one of the year congratulations thank you very much so Paul Fix definitely with a championship shot now. Absolutely. It's not over for Amy by any means. She still has a big lead, but it closes the gap definitely in this championship. The three-dimensional services group Trigon Trophy is up for grabs. Ruman's lead now just 22 over Fix. Doug Peterson still hanging in there in third now. He's another 31 back. Bauckham and Evan, the rest of the top five. But a surprise runner-up today. Here's Shea. Jim McAleese, brilliant job out there. Drive up to second place. Your best finish so far this year. How exciting was that for you? It was awesomely exciting. A couple things. Thanks to Baucom for letting me get by. He could have turned me in the back section in no time. And same thing to Andretti. Uh, they ought to shorten these races <laughs> so I can win more. And uh, it was fantastic. Everybody was perfect. Great job out there. Thank you. So Jim McAlee celebrating as well his best career finish in seconds by a TA3 International. Caboose is your winner. Saunders and Jason Berkeley. Jerry Green and Vince Allegretta, the top five. Good run for Michael Caboose. You know, it's great. You see BMW, Viper, Corvette, Porsche, all these different manufacturers. One, two, three, four. And in TA3 American Muscle, Ernie Francis Jr. triumphs yet again after Todd Napierowski had problems. Yeah, Ernie Francis Jr. has been doing a great job. He's there to capitalize. He gets the victory lane. Big lead in the championship. Craig Capaldi takes second in his Mustang and a host of others. There's Bill Bain in the 85 car. Check the points chase in TA3. Ernie Francis Jr. with a pretty substantial lead. 31 over Napierowski. Mel Shaw back in third to Salvo and Sephiroth. The rest of the top five in front of Jason Victor, Tim Rubright. In TA3 International, Lee Saunders is back on top now by 50 over Caboose. And he has a commanding lead there, but this is what happens in these championships. You can't put your guard down. You have to attack every single race. Wild action here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. I want to thank everybody involved with our group today. I want to thank our friends at Replay XD and at Racing Electronics. For Michael McDowell and Shea Adam, i Rick Benjamin. We congratulate our race winner today, Paul Fix. TA3 International. Our winners, Michael Caboose and Ernie Francis Jr. We'll talk to you next from Road America. Thanks for watching Trans Am.